Hello and welcome to video number three and we're going to talk about the five important factors. Now this is a quick overview of the five factors and then of course the next few videos I'll dive in to every single one of these factors. But before we can really discuss them in depth, you need to have a broader bird's eye view of them. So before we jump into the five factors that your WordPress sites should have or even your non-WordPress sites should have, which they'll definitely work on those too. It's important to know a few things first. So you're going to need to have a general idea of number one, the general keyword that you're going to want to rank on. And number two, a list of specific keywords that branch off of that main keyword. Now don't worry if you don't have that now, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step technique that will help you figure that out. Now, another big mistake that many folks, make is implementing these without a clear plan of attack. And that's why I'm breaking things down in such a manner. There's a reason for everything. In fact, we've seen this with many websites. There's no clear plan and the website owner simply creates content in an area with little or no traffic. And then they're not ranking on any specific keyword. They might even be ranking on keywords that have really nothing to do with their website. And this is a lot of time wasted, right? So that's why I'm not jumping straight head first. I'm breaking things down so that it becomes clear and that way you will succeed. Now, we're not going to focus, like I said, on keyword research, but we do recommend that you check out the suggested keywords. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Google has what we call suggested keywords. Amazon.com also has a list of suggested keywords. Now, this is what happens, and this is super easy. You can literally find the main keyword and a list of specific keywords within a few seconds. So here's what I want you to do. You can do this by going to Google.com, for example, and typing in a general keyword. So you'll notice that when you do, Google will suggest keywords. Now, in order for the keywords to appear in the suggested box, that means that there's a ton, a ton of people that are searching for those keywords. So in other words, there's a high volume of people searching. So when I typed in the keyword survival kit, out dropped a dropdown saying, well, these are other Google suggested keywords like survival kit list, ideas, Amazon, food, and backpack. Now, there's another way of doing this. If you type in the keyword and you press enter, then what's going to happen and you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you're going to see a list of words. So if you scroll all the way down the bottom, after you made that search, you're going to find additional keywords right here where I've put a red box here. So we can see additional keywords or things like military survival kits, survival kit list, best survival kit, survival kit food, items, wilderness survival kit. So we can see not only are there different keywords, but there are also different types of survival kits for different scenarios and different settings. So that gives us an idea of, okay, we can write an article on survival military survival kits or wilderness survival kits. So these could be totally different articles. So now that you have a basic understanding of basic keyword research, let's move on to the five important factors. And they are number one, the URL structure or the domain name and the category name, the file name, even the page name is important. And this is what shows up in the address bar at the very top. Whenever you go to any website, you see the domain name, the page name, and all that in the search bar at the top. That is the URL structure. Now the URL structure is very important because it tells Google and other search engines, are you a brand? Are you a specific keyword? What is your website about? Now that's just one element. There's a, a lot of other elements as well. Number two, we have the body text structure, which contains basically everything on your post or your page in terms of content. So this contains both written text that you use in your posts and pages. And there's more than just slapping a bunch of content for everyone to see. 
So there's a lot that goes into this. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to break things down so you have a better idea of what you should include in your body text structure. Number three, we got image optimization. What this means is making your images more search engine friendly. So just like body text, when it comes to images, Google and other search engines are not going to know right off the bat what they are. So you need to do your best to help them figure out what the images are all about. Now, there are ways that Google will figure out eventually what your images are all about. So don't try to game the system. For example, if you name an image, let's say a wilderness survival kit, the way they figure out if that image is legit or not is oftentimes they'll rank you in the, the Google image search engine. If somebody types in, let's say, wilderness survival kit and they see your image and they click that, they have a better idea that, okay, this is definitely an image of the wilderness survival kit. And that will actually help you in the long run. So don't try to game the system and name an image something that it's not. Name it what it is so that it's an attracting image. And when somebody's looking for the image, they're going to find it, they're going to click it, and that's going to help you in the long run. In fact, beyond that, there's a few more steps you'll need to take. And plus, in addition to that, with the image search engine that I talked about just now, you can actually get a lot of traffic from that search engine. And of course, we got factor number four, which is title optimization, basically how to make your titles search engine friendly because the reality and the truth of the matter is that your titles do show up in the search engine. So you definitely need to do this right. Otherwise, you're going to attract the wrong person. Meta optimization is the same thing. You've got, you've got the description and other metadata that will show up underneath the title in the search engine. So you want to make sure that you attract the right person. Now that we've talked about the five important factors, let's dive into every single one of these five.